Shalom. In today's video, man, I want to uh, give you a good case study on what a delusional woman sounds like. And, you know, men are coming forth saying the nonsense that they have to deal with with a lot of these women. And you have a lot of women that don't think it's true. And, uh, you know, I'm always going to come with receipts as far as making sure as a man, you are equally yoked with a woman spiritually more than anything, because there's something in this woman that told her to divorce and she acknowledges it. But yet she says, yes, I wanted the divorce. But when this man moves on, uh, she spirals out of control and is jealous. I've often said it before, man, these women regret divorce. And women ask the question, how come men aren't approaching them? How come men aren't marrying? No, it's not that men aren't marrying. It's just that men aren't marrying you. They're more cautious. And I encourage men, do not hit yourself to these women. Do not marry these women via a state-issued marriage license. This delusional woman will try to take all of your stuff. She going to run off with them kids, delusional, you know, uh, not mentally stable, and not exercise no logic or sound judgment. A lot of, a lot of women like this, and shout out to the brother HL Talk That Thought, Go support his channel because he has a lot of these case studies on there bringing receipts, you know, bringing forth the tapes. But you hit yourself to a woman like this via the, 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 the court system, the third party court system, which the Most High Yah does not acknowledge because you've pretty much created a covenant with the with the inhabitants of the land. And that's not what he you know, uh, instructed for you to do. Marriage is a beautiful thing. But for the men that are behind the scenes that are suffering, dealing with a woman like this, whoo, there is a better way. There is a better way. And a lot of these women, it's not that they need therapy. They need deliverance. There's something demonically wrong. They need deliverance. We read about it in the Bible, stuff being casted out, but I don't even need to say no more. I'm going to just let you watch this, this video. Uh, I'm going to roll that footage and you'll catch on to what I'm saying. Go check out the brother HL Talk That Thought. You know, support, drop him a comment over there. Let him know I sent you. And, uh, you know, take it for what it is, man. Because I got them tapes. though yes it was me that was like hi i want divorce i can't do this anymore i can't do this anymore i can't do this anymore it brings up all these feelings it brings up all this like stuff and we have a kid and it brings up all this stuff around him i want to be a boss bitch. I want to be independent. I don't need a man. I can do this all on my own. But you cannot just like pretend that it doesn't affect you. And I feel like people should be more out loud about it because I wish that I had more people that were like totally honest and like super f transparent in really difficult times. Oh my god, hi! How are you? It's been so long. Just kidding, we're strangers um, and you don't know me. And this is my first video on this page. Did I grab your attention? Probably not, that's okay, you can keep swiping. I'm bored and something is telling me, it's not rational thought, but something is telling me to start talking at, at myself on the internet and just like, let's see what sticks, you know? 
Maybe it'll make someone laugh. Maybe it will motivate someone. Maybe it will be inspirational. Uh, or maybe it'll just be like, who is this bitch? It could be any of those things. It could be none of those things, but we won't know unless we try, right? So in the spirit of not giving a fuck, um, here we are. So who am I? My name is Abby. I am a millennial. I'm also a single parent. I'm divorced. Love living my single era. I have no interest in dating, but do have some good stories. I was almost going to give away too much. I'm going to save that one for later. But anyways, back to who am I and why should you stick around? I'm on this like journey to discover my life's purpose and I'm doing lots of different things to try and like sort out what that purpose might be, um, including watch the movie Soul. And let me tell you, I think the lesson is that like your purpose isn't like the thing you're supposed to be good at, but like the small moments. Did I like totally misinterpret that movie? Because I haven't actually watched the beginning to end in a long time because my kid again is five and has a really small attention span. So we'll start something and then not finish it. So I could be mistaken. But anyways, back to the point. Trying to discover that at 37 years old is crazy. What is it? I don't know. That's what we're going to figure out. And that's what I'm going to bring, bring the internet along for. And even if it's just one of you and possibly my mom who has burner TikTok accounts, apparently Betsy, whatever she can see this, it's fine. Anyway, I'll see you around. For the sake of being like totally fucking transparent and just like real on social media because everyone's so fucking phony and like refuses to talk about like real things that are like really happening i just i just found out today that my ex-husband is engaged and i'm unwell <laughs> and listen i'll be fine but the only way out is through okay the only way out of this is through it. You cannot bypass it. You cannot suppress it. You cannot wish it didn't exist. You cannot, well, you can wish it didn't exist, but you cannot just like pretend that it doesn't affect you. The only way out is directly through. I know I will be fine. I'm hoping that future me comes back to this and is like, you were, you were going to be good. You were going to be fine. And, and you know it. I know it. I know I will. And like, even though, yes, it was me that was like, hi, I went divorced. I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. Like literally, hey, sorry, play Taylor Swift. I hate it here. Like I can't, can't do this anymore. Even though that is true. It can also be true that it f***ing sucks. It brings up all these feelings. It brings up all this like stuff. And we have a kid and it brings up all this stuff around him. And very little of it has anything to do with my actual ex. Ugh. So, I'm here to be real. I can't live any other way. And I feel like people should be more out loud about it because I wish that I had more people that were like totally honest and like super fucking transparent in really difficult times. Because this is what like builds connections and like builds like common ground and builds like validity and all this shit that we feel that people just don't talk about. And I I hate it. All right, I'm gonna be done because I, I just, I just, you know, I'll be fine. Everything will be right. But I think everybody needs to go to therapy. I know that's not a revolutionary statement. It's probably obvious, but everybody needs to go to therapy. Number of times my mind has been blown by my therapist this year alone in the last six months of working with her. Can't count on two hands. She's amazing. Not the point. The point is she gave me a uh, book recommendation last week 
This is the most recent thing that has been blowing my mind. So the book is called Essential Kink, and at it very simply stated, it's a book about shadow work and like you know digging into your shadow side your subconscious and integrating it with your conscious side or your ego and one of the repeated themes throughout the book is the following quote having is the evidence of wanting this book suggests that without actually doing work with your subconscious side and bringing to light some of your shadow side, we won't actually be able to manifest the things that we want and live in this synchronicity with all the positive experiences that we try and manifest in because we have to address the elephant in your, your whole being is your subconscious. Going back to having is the evidence of wanting. If we have all of these crappy situations in our life that we can't seem to change, it's because somewhere in us, we actually do want those things. Listen, I know it sounds a little crazy and maybe controversial to like admit out loud that the bad things that are drawn into our lives might be because somewhere deep down, we want those things. I know that sounds a little bit crazy, but let me give you a real life example. I like to make what I call the Mary Poppins list. And of course in Mary Poppins, the kids are making a list of attributes for their ideal nanny, what they're looking for. And the dad finds the list, you know, they give it to him, he reads it, he shreds it up and throws it in the goddamn chimney like an asshole. But regardless, those kids made a list and it was essentially like, these are my wishes, this is what I wanna manifest. And out pops Mary Poppins. So that's why I call it the Mary Poppins list. But I made one for what I would like my future partner to be. All the qualities, all the traits, all the ways that they will make me feel in the future. Time and time again, I get on these mother dating apps and is it the men that I'm envisioning that are liking me? It's, it's certainly not. Not to be a dick and I'm, listen, like there's someone for everyone, but like, it's just not, not my type. Not the thing I'm looking for. They're like, just, just not it. Like so far away from <laughs> what I want. When I actually did some of the work through, through this book, it became very clear to me that if I actually got the ideal partner that I'm looking for, I would absolutely find a way to sabotage it. No doubt. Like I, I am, I'm willing and able to admit that out loud now. When I kind of went through some of the exercises and actually like wrote out why I think my subconscious might really be getting exactly what they want in showing me all of these people that are absolutely not my type is to reinforce some of the stories that I tell myself. And some of those stories include, I wanna be a boss bitch. I want to be independent. I don't need a man. I can do this all on my own. Yes, I embody that. I like that narrative. The other more serious and like a little bit more sad truth behind all of this is I think deep down, I don't believe I'm actually worthy of the thing that I want. That's depressing, but that's the truth. I think I can say out loud that I, I don't think that, that I deserve that. I don't think I'm worthy of that. I don't think whatever. And that's, again, that's why I'm in therapy, you guys. Like, so yeah, I just, there's no reason why I shouldn't have exactly what I want, except for that my subconscious doesn't believe that I'm deserving of it. <laughs> so cool, right? But that's a really honest and real example of a place in my life in which I'm not I'm not seeing what conscious Abby thinks she wants because we have to address what subconscious Abby believes because we're getting exactly what subconscious Abby believes. It's a wild fucking concept, but I cannot wait to get into the work more regularly, do the exercises regularly, and like start to embrace all of this because I do believe that on the other side of some of the shadow work and integration with your ego is like actual happiness. It terrifies me because that would mean that a lot of the stories that I tell myself about who I am would be completely unraveled. And then who am I? So I can't wait to share more with you as I get into that. Keep reading because I do think that all of this will eventually help me get to what my actual purpose is because I already think I know what it is, you guys, but I'm fucking terrified of actually saying out loud that I want to do X, Y, Z because then everything would change. My whole life would change. Anyways, happy Saturday. <laughs>